Chapter 5. There is no better feeling than falling in love and finding your life partner. That's what this chapter is all about. So here's the chapter outline. And what I've done is I've brought the next seven slides all together, even though you will find them duplicated where they belong in the PowerPoint. That way we don't have to go through all of the um, slides that I don't talk over. So the marriage market, that refers to when individuals are ready to be married, so they're marketable. The marriage market is a concept that describes how people market themselves and shop for potential mates in society, it's very similar to that of a retailing market. Assortative mating is the filtering process. Your book uh, refers to how we sort and sift to find that right person. Um, individuals gradually filter through those they think would not make the be best spouse. Uh, research has shown that people are willing to date and live with a wider range of individuals than they would marry. So uh, we do need to be picky about who we're marrying. Mate selection involves narrowing down the possibilities until a suitable partner is found. So let's think about this. Should you date somebody you would never consider marrying? Good question. How else will you know if you would consider marrying them if um, you did not date? People do tend to marry people of a similar race, age, education, religious background, and social class. So if you would not marry somebody out of your religion, then should you even go on a date with them? The pool of eligible starts out very large, but is made smaller according to our um, geographic area. Um, the desired demographics, desired social characters, physical attraction, and then personal and lifestyle factors. So there's lots of things to consider when you are picking somebody to, to date and eventually marry. The pool of eligibles, I love this analogy here with the funnel. It's the group of individuals who by background or birth are considered most likely to make somebody compatible as a marriage partner for you. Now we fast forward um, to information towards the end of the chapter on rape myths. Um, a rape myth is anything that would be an incorrect idea about why that rape occurred in society that seeks to blame the victim and exonerate the rapist. Uh, female rape myths are those beliefs about the female that deny that she was raped or cast blame on the woman of her own rape. So stating that rape is due to a strong passion rather than acknowledging it as a violent act of power seeks to not only diminish the rapist's responsibility for that action, but also place the burden of preventing rape on the victim. A person who is raped is never to blame. Even if you think she was dressed provocatively or put herself in a situation, that she should not have, she is never to be blamed. So that's basically what that statement is saying. Um, another rape myth is rapists are violent strangers who are lurking in the shadows. Most rapists today are somebody um, that, that we know, that the victim knows. Another rape myth, the rape was provoked by the victim. So I basically talked about that. Um, earlier when I talked about how the person being raped is never to blame. Men cannot control their sexual urges. Yes, they can. Never let them use that as an excuse. And rapists are mentally ill. So we know that is a myth as well. So then moving on to breaking up. Boy, we're all over the place, aren't we? So I'm trying to provide helpful information um, for the questions in the mind tap. Um, according to what the book calls the exchange perspective. Couples choose to stay committed or to break up by weighing the rewards of their relationship against its cost. When the costs outweigh the rewards, when there are desirable alternatives, when one's relationship does not match one's ideal, when little has been invested, and when there are fewer barriers to breaking up, couples are more likely to do so. 
Nurturing loving and committed relationships. Maintaining a satisfying long-term relationship is challenging. Marriages are work. We live in a society where we think that, that they're very easy. We have the perceptive that people fall in love and it's going to be easy. But no, it is not easy um, to stay married for a long time. However, if you're willing to put in the work, it is worth the rewards. Um, couples who establish a positive relationship while dating do have a more successful marriage later on. And the shared interest that they have is the number one key um, that, that they report to having a successful marriage. So enjoy the rest of these slides. I think they are very um, self-explanatory. And the ones that I've went over will hopefully be helpful to you as you do your mind tap activities. Have a great day.